Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Over the past several months, Adobe has added a ton of new features to Photoshop. And as these features have been introduced, I've been doing videos on them, except I missed two of them. So in today's video, I'm going to cover two new features that are in the current version of Photoshop. And you'll notice I mentioned the current version of Photoshop. The features I'll be demonstrating in today's video aren't exclusive to the beta version. Now, as you can see, I have an image open. The first new feature I'm going to talk about concerns the type tool. So let's say I want to add text to this image. To do that, I would get the type tool. I could tap the T key on my keyboard. That's the keyboard shortcut for the type tool. It's over here on the toolbar right here, the T. And the settings for the type tool along the top, I'll keep those settings and I'll just click in the sky up here and I'm going to type buffaloes, historic, and then I'm going to hit return. And on the second line, I'm going to write grain, and then elevators. The grain elevators in Buffalo, there's a ton of these old grain elevators. Buffalo's really proud of them because the grain elevator was invented in Buffalo. So that's why I'm putting that there. But it's way too small, isn't it? So I need to resize it. So. Before we had this new feature in the type tool to resize this, I would need to select all these letters. So I would select everything, then come up here and I could go to this drop down and pick a size. But the way I prefer to do it is to hover over the T's. And when I do, I'll get this little hand. That's called a scrubby slider. With this, I could click and drag it to the right to make it larger or the left to make it smaller. So I'll just go up here, get that scrubby slider, click and drag to the right and make it larger. All right, sweet. I made it larger. Now, I have these larger letters, but you know what? I wish Grain Elevators was closer to Buffalo Historic or Buffalo's Historic. I want these lines closer together. Well, a couple of different ways I could do that. The way I would do it is I would hit this check mark to commit to this type. Then I have my Photoshop workspace set up. So I have a character panel over here. So I would click on my character panel and from here I could affect certain features or certain qualities of the text. I could choose a new font. I could resize it here. I also could make these two lines closer together. That's this control right here. So I could go to this drop down and pick a size that would be the space between them. But again, the way I prefer to do it is just hover over the front of it where it has these two A's. I'll get that scrubby slider. I could push them apart by clicking and dragging to the right or pull them together by going to left. All right, all right, still, this is nothing new. This has been in the type tool for a long time. Now, the more I'm looking at it, I'd like grain elevators to be larger so that it's squared off with Buffalo Historic. Well, to do that, I would need to select grain elevators. Then I could do it over here, or I could do it up here, but I'll do it over here, is I'll hover over the T's, I'll get the scrubby slider, and I'll drag to the right. And notice I'm making it bigger. Well, now it's too close to Buffalo's Historic, so I need to push it away. So I'll go over here and I'll push it down. And then when I'm satisfied, I could click the little like check mark here, and it looks better. So that was quite a bit of work to take care of that. Well, with that said, there's a better way to do this uh, with this new feature that's in the type tool. Let me get rid of this text layer and let's start over. So let me get smaller text like I did before. So I'll take this uh, size down, or and that will leave everything else pretty much the same. Again, I'm going to type on the sky, and I'm going to again type buffaloes, historic, grain, elevators. Okay, so we have that type there. Now, I want to resize it. I want to make grain elevators larger. I want to make sure it's spaced properly from buffaloes historic. Well, I could do that a lot easier now with this new feature. It's called dynamic text. This little T with the lightning bolt. Just click on it. And you'll notice that it resized grain elevators and repositioned it so it better matches Buffalo's Historic. Well, what about resizing it? Well, to resize it, just click on it and you have a bounding box. I could just grab a handle now and resize it. It's just so much easier. I could remove it over here. Just make it larger, smaller. And you'll notice it's a lot faster, a lot easier. It has everything kind of spaced properly. It has everything sized properly. If I wanted to experiment with something different, I could pull this in, 
like that. And look at now, it has buffalo spay or a line break, historic line break, and then grain elevators together. So I could try something different. You see how much easier that is. That's the new dynamic text feature that's now in Photoshop. And it's something I'll use all the time because I'm making thumbnails for my videos. And often on my thumbnails, I have text there. And this is going to be a time saver. It's a lot easier doing it this way than the way I showed you at the beginning. So that's one new feature. The second new feature, uh, let me get rid of this for now. Totally. And the second new feature has to do with color. Let me show you on this image here. You see this image is like different shades of red. They're all really close together, including the background. This new feature is in Camera Raw. So to get to it, I need to go up to Filter, then down to Camera Raw Filter. And specifically, it's in the Color Mixer. So if I click on the Color Mixer and I grab this eyedropper and I just click on a color, I could click on the background, I click on any of them, but let's click right here. So I selected a color. This new feature is this slider right here. It's called Variance. You will see that it says Early Access. So it's, it's kind of in beta, but it's in the regular version of Photoshop. It's not just in the beta version. So we have this Variance slider. And you'll notice that if I move it to the right, it, it makes the, each of the shades more distinct from one another. By default, when I had the image, when it's right in the middle, you'll notice they're kind of all similar shaded. I move it to the right, it makes them more distinct. If I move it to left, it brings them all kind of together. So they're all like more closely shaded together or colored together. So you could see how you could use that to make uh, colors, I guess, stand out from one another a little better. You make similar colors stand out. Now you can come over to the range slider down here and change the range. You could see it up here. You don't really see it up here as much. You could see how it's affecting the range. You also could roll this open and you could have it only affect the hue range wider, maybe, or the saturation range. You're not seeing much on here, but on some images you would uh, see a difference happen. Now you notice what that does. Okay, this new feature that's in Adobe Camera Raw. Let me click OK. Just get out of here. But on a real image, it's a little bit more profound what it do, what it does. Let's go to our original image here. And let's go up to Filter, then down to Camera Raw Filter. And again, we're going to get the eyedropper. And let me click on the blue sky. All right. Now let's take this variance slider and move it to the right. Look what it's doing to the sky. And the water, for that matter. It's blue everywhere. But you see how that's affecting the sky and it's kind of making it look pretty cool i kind of like what it does now let's just get rid of this um totally i'll right click here delete swatch uh if you don't want it to affect the water it's also available in masking so if i go to masking and i select the sky right and then i get rid of light and i get rid of color and i go to point color i could grab the eyedropper and click on that blue sky again and then i could go to variance and then it will only affect the sky that's a pretty cool new feature. I like that. That's another new feature. It's been, I guess, in Photoshop for a little bit. And I haven't noticed it or covered it until today. Now, very quickly, before we go, I do want to mention that if you go to my website, anthonymorganti.com, I have a lot of courses, including an entire course on Photoshop. I also have a lot of free stuff. If you click on this link for Get Now for the free stuff, I have some mini courses how to create a product box in Photoshop, masking in Photoshop, particle dispersion effect in Photoshop. And I have downloadable keyboard shortcut PDFs. These are PDFs that you could download for free and print them at home. I have them for Lightroom Classic, Lightroom Desktop, or Lightroom CC. I have them for Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw, Adobe Bridge, Photo AI, Luminar, On1, Premiere Pro, and Final Cut Pro. I'll have this linked in the description below this video. And that's it. That's a couple new things that are in the current version of Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.